This video will be an operational overview of the X35 monitor. It is in no way intended to be comprehensive. If you require more information on any of the items covered, please refer to Operator's Manual or online resources for further information. On the front screen of the X35, we have a number of tabs on the left hand side. We talked about the wrench to get into the settings page on the previous video. Now we'll talk on the rest of them. The top tab is the Borgo tab. It'll give you information including your software version. Uh, <clears throat> when it's extended like this, it's called a mini view. On a mini view, if the top corner has the box with an open corner means it can be expanded to full view of screen. To do that you either hit that small square in the corner or you can put your finger on the mini view and drag it and it'll cover what's ever on the main portion of the screen. To remove a mini view you can touch on the tab associated with it or hit the little arrow on the top left corner. Just close the screen. So on the full expanded view, there's some more information. Of course, the uh, console software version is there. If we scroll down to the implement portion, it will give you your ECUs that are on the machine, as well as firmware version if it's connected. There's no real way to get rid of the full view. All you can do is really cover it up with another um, one of the tabs. Okay, so we'll just use the guidance screen, the triangle with the green uh, green triangle tab is for guidance. Now across the top there's a number of items and tabs associated with it as well as on the right hand side. So on the top it is a tank tab, so this is to enter the different rates. Uh, we'll show on the screen below, you can see the different colors associated with different uh, rates that have been applied. So you can edit that, change your range. Generally like to see that range go to double the actual rate that you are applying on that tank just so you get a better um, view of colors. So in this one here we'll actually put it down to Alright, the uh, auto applied one, generally we will ask you, it's better to set your own ranges than to do the auto applied one, it generally just goes to the rate, maximum rate you're using. Uh, the, the slide scale here is just enhancing the color, so it doesn't really change anything other than the, the color. And then the arrows at the bottom are just different color schemes, you can select one that you choose. Switch box, uh, if it was enabled in the settings page there will be a switch box that shows up here for your sections. The hand on their screen will just uh, light up, turn blue if you actually have something active on the screen. Alright, so we are touching on the boundary here, it's telling us the work region. Okay. If you wanted to delete that boundary, you could do that by hitting the delete button on that screen. That would erase that boundary. The green dot will just recenter the screen. If you the implement gets off the center of the screen, it just brings it back to center. The map layer uh, tab just shows different things you can have active and actually showing up or if you don't want them unhighlight them. There's a coverage and different um, views on it as well. Coverage, GPS quality, applied, rate, different map layers depending on what you have enabled and then also for each of the individual tanks you'll get a <clears throat> different applied rate map. The next tab is just the view of your guidance screen, so overhead view and the 
landscape view a zoom in and zoom out button are also on the top on the top right corner that is the quick start button if you have enabled it or the job help button if, if you have it enabled so touching on it it's going to try to attempt some of the things so master switch is on it's not allowing us to do that so it's going to give you a warning if something is not allowing it to actually do what you want it to do next on that screen is the uh, field tab <clears throat> so again in here you can go in select your field if you have all your fields and maps and everything loaded you can use the button down here to actually load the closest field okay, it's already telling us we're in that field alright if you hadn't entered your fields you can add them simply by clicking on your field name adding a new name to it uh, if you wanted to unload that field just hit the field with the X that'll just remove it from the screen flag point if you wanted to mark something uh, if you had a tower or something you can mark it on your screen for doing a boundary when you're doing your first headland you can use the X box that will start your headland and then whenever you complete it you hit the next one it'll become active and you will complete that headland their headland offset or boundary offset here just where you're recording right or left <clears throat> any additional offset information that you want to add to it as well the next tab down is your headland options so if this is enabled it, it allows you to create a boundary inside the boundary um, that would remain unseated so if you have it set to your headland mode it's going to use that as your new boundary so you can see in this screen here there is a second boundary it's a yellow one inside of our original one that's actually well two two widths of the machine you can change that by changing that to three we can see that now that headland boundary has moved in and if we were to continue seeding now that would now be our new area that wouldn't be seeded anything outside that orange line if you wanted to delete the boundary you can hit the erase if you had a boundary on a stick in a shape file you could import it and then also the last one is you can create a boundary from coverage so like on this one we made one round around the field and then we put a boundary around it when you're doing that you want to click the excluded regions and make sure they're uh, red so otherwise you'll get another boundary on the inside of your coverage and it'll give you two boundaries you'll have to go in and delete one if you uh, leave it so that it's doing exclu excluded areas <clears throat> okay there's also some boundary smoothing and and different settings as well so it's just creating a boundary uh, tried to create a boundary but it's saying they matched existing ones so I, it's not going to make any new ones Okay. We'll exit out of that. The next one is just the job tab. So on it, it'll be a list of the jobs, uh, current jobs you have for the field that you are in. You can add a job. So on the job new job it's going to load the implement that you have and then if you wanted to rename your job you just enter the name you would like just starting uh, you can either erase them all or or none of them 
and then enter the enter the name. Okay, next tab, this one here is grayed out right now. That's for configuring your job regions. So if you have SLUs and, and things that are excluded, you can uh, configure those. The next one is your VRC uh, adjustment. So you can go in and change and set your various options for your VR. There's a tab here just to record other job information. Uh, deleting or erasing your your job you can use with the eraser and then at the bottom is an export window so if you wanted to export your job again you'll hit this tab it's gonna look for the stick make sure you have a stick in before you do export and hit that it will export your job onto the stick the next two are for steering and they're not required so um, there's nothing in there that you're going to be using. The next tab down is our GPS tab. Okay, so on it, it just has your GPS information. There's three little windows you can open up for different GPS information. <clears throat> next one is our memory usage. Okay. We have here showing us our main menu, menu, memory, our USB memory, and the file system. We have console information, and we also have any trouble codes that may have been uh, reported in the last little while. And there's also a data logging tab here. Next is the job statistics tab. On it is five little windows that will open as well. Um, just showing different aspects of the job. Uh, the last one again is just another one you can click on to add your own personal notes. Our next tab is the auto section control. So we have our boom control tab. And if you are using dual boom, which is controlling seed and fertilizer differently at different times, you can set those all separately. Again, most of the time we never really want to set these at 100, but usually fairly close. Some, like your fertilizer, a little lower than the seed perhaps, just so there's not doubling up on the headlands and lodging which can occur. These auto section can be turned on and off individually. Um, just remember that when you exit with one of these turned off it doesn't show up on this screen that it's turned off. So these are going to have to be made sure that they are turned on so that we can know that we're all are turned on. Turn them all off, we can turn it off here and then you can see now that it's turned off. But if you have one turned off in the background, it's not necessarily going to be showing up. You have to know it's not on. Now that boundary limit, so there's three different uh, options here. You have your unlimited. When it's set to unlimited, the machine will see whether there's a boundary or not inside, outside of the boundary set to the field boundary. If there is a boundary created then it's not going to be able to seed outside of that. It'll shut off when it gets to that point. And like we showed before, if you have it set to headland mode in your guidance screen and you turn this to headland, now it will control to where that headland is. Okay. Next there is a switch box for both seed and fertilizer, so a tab for each one of those. Next is the seeder controller tab. Okay, so there's a mini view here and on it there's a tab for fans for your 
lift control, blockage, as well as each one of the tanks. You can scroll through to see all of those in a mini view. If we drag it out to the main screen, we'll just close the guidance window. Uh, now there's a whole list of tabs that come up on the right hand side. So 1 to 5 are your tanks. By touching on those, they'll either put them on the screen or take them off, depending what the case is, if they're there or not. So we'll just take them all off here for a second. Put tank 1 on. Okay, so in tank 1, if you touch on the top portion, it's going to close that window to half the width. Touching on the top window where the it's listed for the product that's in it, it'll open up this screen so it gives you a product name. So if you were going to change the product that you have in that tank, you can come here, open this up, you get into the same wizard if you don't have any products created that we saw in the settings. And you can go into the Borgo list, pick from the list if you don't have that created yet. If you do have it created, then you'll have a list like this here with different products in there. Okay. has a spot for your rate increment preset rates so if you had say five preset rate hundred and fifty density so whenever you put your product in down at the bottom it's going to also show you in this screen the range limits for the different ranges of the tank. So low, mid, and high gives you a minimum rate at full width, a minimum rate at one section, and a maximum rate at full width. So we just have to make sure whenever we're doing a product, um, if we're doing it at 100 pounds, and we're going to have to make sure that we pick the range that we can achieve that. Okay. Okay. Um, also on here, whenever we're filling these out, your preset one is going to go into here. Your preset two goes into this square. Your increment is going to be how much it changes by when you hit the plus minus. Um, and then whether it's auto or VR will depend on what whether you have your VR maps and everything loaded or not. Next down on that front window there's a fill tab so in this you can fill one tank, you can add weight or you can increase or fill all of your tanks and there's also the the fill tank wizard here that allows you to enter this and you can do this with an app as well if you use the extend app it'll go through and you can fill as you as you go okay below that the 23666 that's the maximum amount of product that it calculates you can put in there based on the density of the of the product you have. There's a hour a timer there for how long the clutch is on and been seating. Below that there's a window that you can put a bunch of information into, five different things you can monitor in that window. So select out of this list and then up on the top left there's two more or space for two more things that you can be monitoring as well. 
All right, so that is the same for all your tanks. They all work the same way. The next tab is configuration tab. So on here, the first thing you'll see is a manual speed. Uh, in order to do calibrations, you need manual speed. And just make sure whenever you calibrate, you, you click the manual speed. Touch on multi-tank calibration to get into your automatic calibration. And then there's a wizard here as well to follow through. Again, more information is online how to do uh, calibration. Also in the multi-tank calibration, or in the configuration tab, there's the tank optimizer. So in this, you can... Okay, enter the weight for each of the products, how you want it assigned, whether to a specific tank, multiple meters, split rate or not. And split rate just means it's metering out of two different tanks at a percentage so they both run out at the same time. <clears throat> okay, so once you get all your products in, hit the arrow button, it'll go through, tell you which tanks to put each product in to get the most acres per fill. Okay, so again, if you don't like the first combination, you can scroll through. The number of acres is going to change. Uh, pick the one that suits your needs. And then if you want to apply the configuration, it'll apply that to your uh, tank configuration. You will still have to go into your settings to change um, <clears throat> which tank is metering into seed and which tanks are metering into fertilizer stream. Okay, so let's go back here again. If you want to add more products, you just hit the hit the air plus button, add all the products that you are seeding, and it'll give you the best configuration. All right, there's also a spot for calibrating your pack master right on here if that needs to be done. Below we have our job area counters. So again, there's two different area counters, the job area counter, implement area counter. All right. On each one of them, you can have up to five different things listed that you can be viewing. Okay. Uh, it'll give you the different amounts and times and amount per acre that's being done for each one of these uh, tanks. There are separate areas as well so you can um, keep track of different fields or products or however you want to do that. The job area counter is going to get reset every time you start a new job. However the implement area counter that will count for the entire year or um, as many years as you leave the same implement uh, is in your profile. The fan tab will just place a fan uh, over on this side of the screen on the left side. Below the lower portion of the screen you can see here it's got one of three section state seeds. So this is just another section switch if you go down here, this is our blockage monitor. So green means it's working, red means it has a plug. This is just a simulator showing the difference. On the next screen, if you have drill control and pack master, your packing force that you're controlling to would be listed over on in the white there, and your presets 1 and 2, your increments there on the plus and minus. On the right side you can see we have both the packing force and the hydraulic pressure listed here. Our power button for our raise lower. So if, the, if you turn this on your openers go into float. Everything continues to seed but you're in the float position. Reduce your uh, hydraulic pressure down to zero. Then we have our lift lower button and then the track master button. Track master ties the shanks to your master switch. So whenever you turn your master on, 
your if you're not over coverage, your openers will go down, and if they if the master is off, the shanks are going to raise out of the ground. Below that, the, we call this the dashboard. Okay, so whenever you touch on the dashboard, you'll get a list of different items here. You can put as many on until you get your dashboard full. Okay, once you have the one selected that you want, you can individually select each one and then from the list pick three or two, whatever that particular item will allow you to. The, dash, the dashboard items will remain there no matter what's going on up above in the main screen here. So whether you're on the guidance screen or your way scale or camera screen, the dashboard is going to be running all the time. Okay, the next tab is camera tab. So if you have a 9000 tank, this will be on there. If you have a 7000, it will not. Uh, we can open it up. And again, down here, I believe there should be two cameras. Uh, how do I switch the camera to? So you switch back and forth between cameras. We don't have any hooked up on this, so it's not showing. The next tab is the uh, universal terminal. So this here would be where your scale would show up. So here we see on this 7000 uh, the total weight and then the saddle is also here. Okay, the last tab on the screen here is our inventory manager. We'll just close the rest of these. Camera. Okay, I'll close them this way. So on the inventory manager, this is how we move files, copy files. We can take files, we can also look for files on our stick, so if we push on that, it'll now say we're on the USB. So these are the different things that are on the stick, not on the hard drive. Well, they may be on the hard drive as well, but these ones are actually looking on the USB for these. If we just touch this again, then it goes back to the monitor itself. Okay, so we can go in and look at the different fields, jobs, boundaries, vehicles, implements, all that is in here. If we wanted to copy this all onto a stick from the monitor, this disk to the thumb drive will do that. If we wanted to take the files, all the files that we have on our USB stick and put them onto the hard drive, that is the tab to use. If you're using that tab and copying files that way, you're not exporting jobs, that's only copying information. If you were to wanted to copy your jobs, so here we are, let's go to our jobs, okay. So this is showing for this client farm field. These are the jobs here. If you wanted to copy these to our stick or export them actually, we hit this. So now it's going to give you and tell you that you're actually uh, exporting job. Okay. Once you uh, decide to export it, if you've done your own adjusting ranges, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, you can create shape files to get your uh, boundaries and that type of thing. Your other exclusion boundaries for slews and, and that will also be copied over and then you'll see this job report export in progress so if you don't see that and you've only copied the files you haven't actually exported them okay once they're exported 
after the season you may want to make sure that they are you do have them on in the form and the reports are in order but if you want to delete your jobs then you would have to hit the garbage can here and that would actually allow you to then delete those off of the monitor just exporting them alone does not remove them from the monitor so they would have to be uh, deleted once your monitor gets full so that's the basic overview of the X35 monitor again more detailed information is available in your operator's manual as well as online in various locations.